I saw a scientist on television the other week, and he was saying that the moon was formed around four billion years ago, when the proto-Earth was struck by a Mars-sized object called a Theia. I thought, that's fantastic, but how do we actually know? Uh, well, he's a physicist and an astronomer, and he'll give you lots of reasons to do with spin and angular momentum, but that's all physics. And as a chemist, I don't really believe in physics any more than I absolutely have to. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Chemistry is all about stuff, about rocks, about uh, material. I need something that's going to tell me a story, so I look to isotope ratios. Isotopes are kind of like the high-fat and low-fat versions of elements. Uh, oxygen-16 and oxygen-18 are chemically identical. You can breathe them both. You can burn them both. Uh, they only differ in their weight. And this weight, this tiny difference in the weight, you can be used as a sort of uh, stamp, as an identifier. Think of it like this. Um, if I were to record the weights of everyone in Britain, uh, I'll start with you, madam, how much do you weigh? <laughs> it's all right, I've got a machine that will tell me. Bong, 75 kilograms, uh, average weight of people in Britain. In America, bong, 80 kilograms. In Japan, bing, 70 kilograms. Do you see what we can do? We can tell where a group of people come from, from the distribution of their weights. In practice, it would be a bit fuzzy, but imagine that, but around about 10,000 times more accurate. Using these tiny isotopic differences as a kind of elemental fingerprint to tell where something comes from, what it belongs to. Tell the difference between meteorites that fall from the sky. Um, these are the junk and debris of the solar system. Isotopically, they're all over the place to any two material, uh, rocks from Earth. Even if the continents apart, will be isotopically very, very similar because material on Earth has had a long time to mix up, to equilibrate. A theory begins to form. If the moon is regular space junk, it will be isotopically very distinct from us. If it's a mixture of us and Theia, it will be more similar. Luckily, some people went to the moon in 1969. You may have heard of this, brought some rocks back. <laughs> what we find is moon rock and Earth rock are isotopically identical. You can't tell the difference. The theory has to change. When Theia struck the Earth, they must have hit us dead on. All the mass of Theia getting absorbed into Earth's core. The stuff that got blasted out into space by the titanic force of this impact, that was our mantle, our crust. No wonder we look the same. We're made of the same material. What does this mean? Well, a biologist could tell you that the formation of the moon had an effect on evolution on Earth, but that's biology. <laughs> what it means to me is, when we went to the moon, in 1969, and brought those rocks back. We were bringing them home. <laughs> Lovely story, like the story. Um, now you've been dissing German physics, you've been dissing the biologists out there, Tell me what's so good about chemistry, then. Oh. Tell me how it's changing the world around us. <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> Chem I, I, I will, will say, obviously, chemistry is wonderful and the best field, but uh, I don't feel like I'm... Give uh, me one example. <laughs> um, Cancer? Well, if we're going to be on the um, <laughs> environmental front... Um, I do analytical chemistry, so I work on detecting pollutants and uh, looking at things like uh, fluorinated pollutants, um, things like waterproof clothing, the, the stuff that comes off that lasts for hundreds of years, because, well, a, a very, very long time, because it does, it's made to be incredibly stable, it doesn't really degrade. So we really need to find ways of tracking this, to find out where it goes, what it affects, and it's analytical chemists like myself who are in this sort of business. I, I, I like chemistry. It's one of my favorite branches of physics. <laughs> <laughs> um, David, so I don't know much about the subject, but let's see if I could shoot, shoot a quick hole in, in your theory. You say the, the rocks on the moon are identical to the rocks on Earth in terms of their isotopic mm. um, abundance. Um, how would you explain away, for instance, the fact that maybe the Earth and the moon both formed at the same time, you, you know, just you know, the way all the planets formed, bits of lumps of rock clumping I, together as they orbit the sun, they're the same age. I believe, again, we're going into physics territory here, and this isn't... I, don't know, I, don't, I genuinely don't know the answer to this, so I'm just wondering if you do. I believe it's um, to do, like, if something the size of the moon was to form 
uh, by itself. It would naturally form at a dis distant, uh, distance from the sun, and so its isotopic uh, composition would be, would be different. Um, and that's, that's sort of the best excuse I can give for it. Um, I don't want to give the idea, by the way, that um, this, uh, this is the giant impact hypothesis that I'm talking about, that it's completely set in stone, as it were. Um, <laughs> um, because there are, there are um, certain flaws with it. Um, for instance, um, if we had been struck by this massive, uh, this, this enormous impact, all of Earth would have become molten. And there's still you know, plenty of evidence that certain rocks on Earth haven't gone through this uh, molten process. Um, there's an alternate hypothesis that I was reading about today, very luckily, um, that's being published next month um, that states that um, uh, what could have happened is we were struck by a much, much smaller meteorite, around about 100 kilometers, so a tiny little thing, that uh, triggered a, a natural geonuclear reactor at the boundary between Earth's core and its mantle to go critical, and this blasted the material right out into, into space on its own. And that would also explain why, isotopically, the Moon and the Earth are identical. Can I just chip in to break my role and ask the question I thought Jim was going to ask, which is to say, how does your theory about the moon rocks not fit in with the, the scary, nutty conspiracy theorists or say the fact that they're isotopically the same proves we never went to the moon in the first place? <laughs> you know they're never going to allow us to broadcast this. Yeah. <laughs> this is done. This yeah. is finished. Yeah. I, uh, funnily enough, yes, uh, moon rocks are isotopically very similar to rocks in the Arizona desert. Yes, so therefore they never went. Okay, his topic was isotopic. Please one time for David McNeigh. <laughs>